So good evening, everyone. This is Nishan from BCD Learning. I thank you all for joining today's webinar. BCD Learning and Sam Labs welcome you all to this interesting webinar where we will be introducing you to an innovative STEM solution for schools from Sam Labs. But before that, let me take a moment to introduce you all to BCD Learning, the driving force behind today's webinar. Right. So BCD Learning uh, is the education division of Bhavan Cybertech Group, uh, which is a leading global digital transformation company headquartered in the Middle East. BCD Learning's journey began with the purpose of using innovative edtech solutions to empower K-12, higher education, corporates, and government sectors. We bring unparalleled expertise to help our clients fix the gaps in their learning models. From AR, VR labs to upskilling, we have multiple offerings in digital and experiential solutions category. Present across the GCC, BCT Learning has offices in Oman, Qatar, UAE, and Saudi Arabia. Now let's meet our speakers for the session. First, I will introduce you to Joa Chimhon. He's the founder and CEO of Sam Labs. Then we have Jason Lin. He's the head of UK, APEC, and MEA region for Sam Labs. Our speakers bring a wealth of knowledge and experience to the table, and we are incredibly fortunate to have them with us today. So before we start, just before we start the webinar, I just wanted to inform you all that there will be a Q&A session towards the end of the uh, webinar. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to use the chat box for that, and I will be asking those questions to our speakers. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nishant, and thanks, Vishali, for organizing this, and thanks to all, everyone uh, for attending. Really cannot wait to tell you more about Sam Labs, about our mission here. My name is Joe. I'm the founder of Sam Labs, um, and I want to tell you a bit more about Sam Labs and what it is that we do and why we do it. Um, Sam Labs is a personal story. I originally come from Belgium, a small country in Europe, and I was... Um, um, can you see my screen? Everyone can see my screen fine? Great. Yes. Um, I, I came from Belgium, a small country in Europe, and I was lucky enough at the age of 18 to get to go and study engineering in the UK at a top university called the Imperial College. And that really changed my life. Uh, having these STEM skills gave me social and economic mobility. Um, I started getting involved with uh, other people who also uh, who might not have had chances to get to, uh, well, uh, study these specific skills, because I really believe, and it's shown now in literature and in research, that STEM skills is the biggest way for people to take ownership of their lives and have the best possible performance in their career and uh, future. And really, this is the um, thesis for Sam Labs. We want to give every child the opportunity to prosper in the world through education. Uh, we view a world where we serve students, teachers and schools and school districts, and we want to have given 100 million students computational thinking skills. Why we want to do that, you might wonder. Well, it's because we have seen and we know the impact of STEM on people. We And we know that they're the most stable jobs, the most robust jobs, the most high growth jobs that give the most earnings to uh, the people in these jobs are STEM jobs. We also know that Unfortunately, not everyone has got access to these jobs. When it comes to students from you know, uh, disadvantaged backgrounds, students from diverse backgrounds, students uh, that are female, they don't always are encouraged to pursue these fields. Uh, and we know that women in STEM earn 33% more than any other women. Uh, we know that there are tons of scholarships in STEM fields, and we know that graduates in general with STEM degrees earn 20% more than their peers. And this is what we focus on at Sam Labs. We'll show you how the solution works, but we have now worked with the very best institutions of the world, from Imperial College of London, to the Royal College of Art, to BCG, Capgemini, um, uh, Adidas, Nike, in terms of innovation, Zahadid Architects. Our focus is really how we impact education, starting in kindergarten all the way to grade 12. And this is where we have shown immediate impact to the schools and school districts that we've worked with from urban school districts, like, um, oh no, sorry, uh, rural school districts, um, slash suburban, like urban school district, where we've shown a 820% increase in female students electing STEM 
subjects in high school to important public schools, extremely urban and uh, um, uh, high needs districts, where we have shown an immediate increase in students from minorities participating in STEM um, activities in the summer, all the way to rural districts like Palm Springs Unified School District, where students now use STEAM every day. And seminars have been featured in the press, from the Financial Times to The Guardian um, uh, to um, uh, um, uh, Wired. But the press I'm most proud about is the press that we got featured in, which is local. We have shown uh, local press in um, uh, Chicago, where uh, Superintendent Tully is doing amazing work, creating a national center for STEM excellence. And which partner do you choose? STEM has to do so. New Haven, Connecticut. Um, uh, uh, Jefferson County, West Virginia, and then in and around Detroit with Superintendent John Dignan. And how we do now, we are not the cheapest, afford, uh, cheapest and most affordable option on the market. We know that, although we try to be as affordable as possible and we are you know, close to leading the pack, that's not us. But we are the most complete solution that gives the best outcome for its students. And that's where we strike the balance. Time Labs has an impact in schools globally with 6,000 plus schools. And by the latest count, we're now at 8,000 um, using SAM Labs day in, day out, not just in the US where we're now leading force, but also in the rest of the world. And how we do that? Well, we ensure we have a perfect product that is stays ahead of competition with recent launches of SAM Script, middle school career and industry activities, and a new and improved content hub. What's on the robot for us is middle school STEAM and AI courses that are career driven, classing integration, which is single sign on um, and capturing you know, the rest of a, a, a great market, and then a lesson builder and interactive lessons that are great for teachers and students alike to build their own content and customize it. This doesn't come just on its own. We have here um, uh, Jason. Uh, doing amazing work all across the region and a leadership team that is committed to, to students' outcome. My name is Joe, I'm the CEO. We have our head of product, um, Emily Diffenbaum, who has been in, uh, a teacher, who was a teacher for 15 years before joining Sam Labs, leading her districts. We have McKinsey, uh, a head of customer success, who will ensure every single teacher is cared for and safe for every single student. Five years in education before joining Sam Labs and now overseeing a team across the world. Um, and uh, uh, our chairman has focused on well uh, growth organization education for his entire career. Now our advisory board are esteemed superintendents from a diverse background who have led the biggest and most transformative districts in the US across their career. And they have selected our company to be advisors to, to create a change across the world. And we've seen exponential growth since working with them. And then finally, we have seen science core improvements across districts we've worked with as they have been using Sam Labs. So I can't be more thankful to be working with you and talking with you about potential change um, across your students, students population, and working with Cybertech, uh, BTC, Cybertech company, uh, Nishant and Jason for this. Thanks so much for having me and I look forward to the rest of the presentation. Thank you, Joe. I think uh, Jason would like to continue. Yeah. Okay, I will share my slides, okay? Sure. Okay, can you see clearly? Yes, please. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you for having me here today. Uh, I'm very excited to introduce you to the amazing world of SAMLAB STEAM solutions and also SAMLAB STEAM education program. Today, I will show you how to get started with SAM Labs, and I will show you some project showcases. Uh, how SAM Lab works? We normally call, we offer four pillars. Uh, the curriculum, the coding platforms, we normally call SAM Studio, and the hardware, our wireless blocks, and our professional development and support. So the first one, the curriculum, which is designed by teachers and also made for teacher for teachers. Uh, we offer many lessons for primary and secondary school. The K-5 STEAM course for elementary schools covers almost all areas of STEAM with the resources 
and tools available for teachers and students in our STEM studio. The fourth to eighth learn to code courses for secondary schools focused on teaching block based coding with the resources and tools available to guide learning. And the STEAM six to eight course focuses more on the student's future career development. As you can see from the K-8 breakdown list, the K-8 STEAM lessons courses covering almost all industry fields. Recently, Sam Labs also published AI lessons. Teachers can use AI activities to prepare students for tomorrow's innovators, fostering creativity and critical thinking. We have many STEAM lesson packs and each pack comes with teachers and students resources. We also have a near port audio recorded lessons as suitable for remote learning. In addition to the lesson packs, we also provide more teachers resources such as UK and US standard alignment, school midterm term planning, etc. Each lesson, once you finish, there is a one assessment the teacher can use to evaluate student progress and also for grading. Our second pillar is the SAM Studio. We have three coding platforms, SAM Space, SAM Blockly, and SAM Script. SAM Space is a flow-based coding designed for primary school or younger learners, block-based coding for secondary or intermediate students, and the SAM Scripts platform for advanced students. Students can use Students can use these uh, uh, SAM scripts, all right, these coding platforms from basics and progress to more complex programming. These are the physical blocks and the virtual blocks shown in SAM space. We have a block directory showing how each block works and links to the real world. SAM space is an intuitive starting point that focuses on programming logic, making it easy for students to get started. Some, uh, some space introduces and emphasizes the logical process and pro programming. It serves as an excellent entry point for students who have never been introduced to progr programming before, particularly for students who lack programming training or technical background. Some blockly as a level of uh, progression for students, allowing them to transition from visual coding in some space to block-based block coding. Some script offers transition from block-based coding to JavaScript and Python and allows connection to hardware. SAMScript is a versatile coding platform that bridges the gap between block-based coding and text-based languages, fostering a seamless learning progression and offers wireless integration with SAM blocks and microbit, enabling real-time coding and testing and supports learners at all levels. The third one is our hardware. We have a three kits, Steam kits, Learn to Code kit, and Maker kit. Steam Classroom kit, designed for K5, and this kit can be used for 30 students to lower the cost for schools. The Learn to Code Classroom Kit, designed for grade four and grade eight, and this kit can also be used for 30 students. Maker Kit can be used for all K-8 levels, 
Normally, this kit can be shared by five to six students. It allows students to walk through the iterative design process and see how computer science can apply to the real world scenarios or problems. We have other kits available. And we also have 11 different blocks or different sensors. Each block is wireless and has one function. Allow students to build something in the real world without worrying about wearing. Uh, the last one is our professional development. We offer three levels of certification for teachers. Focus on conceptual knowledge and also practical knowledge. We have a website and teacher can use to start self guided courses and get the certification. Finally, I'm going to show you some project showcase. This is a project built by US students during COVID for synthesizing tables. Eh? And this is another one, is a counting machine, using our SAM block, SAM space, coding platform, and all the sensor here, plus other local pieces. This is an uh, engineering an earthquake simulation project. And as you can see, some other projects here as well. Steam challenges. And some week summer camp activities. All these activities and the projects and the lesson plans, seasonal activities are inside our SAM studio. These are the competition we had in the past and many more if you want to know. Okay, thank you for listening. <laughs> All right, if you have any questions, and uh, please ask me and also Joe, yeah. Thank you, Jason. Thank you for that uh, session and uh, yeah, I think we have one question here. Uh, no, somebody wants to see how the Sam Studio looks. Uh, so would you like to give us a little bit overview, uh, J Jason, in terms of how it looks and then what teachers can expect from the studio itself? OK. Uh... I'll just share my Sam Studio. Can you see it? Oh, you're sorry, you mute. Okay, you can see it, right? Yes, yes, yes. I okay, guess. okay. So once the school, okay, uh, this I we uh, just be in mind, we can always uh, give you a free trial of any school would like to go teachers to go ahead. Okay, we can give you a free trial of Sam Studio. So when you open Sam Studio, log into Sam Studio, what you will see here, you probably won't see all these projects because I already built them. So when you look at that, you will see projects, schools, sometimes you see classes, okay? So when you see, you might see uh, some uh, classes, okay? So like uh, what I have here, I have many classes built. Okay, I just log in again, okay? So when you look at it, you will see classes. Okay, let's say I built many classes here. Okay, let's say Brazil, you know, and other Costa Rica. So when you download, you can download the roster. You add more students here. Okay, and this is our content hub, which you have more many resources available is under content hub. When I start, I normally when we look at it, first thing we will look at our content hub because the lesson plan is the most important thing. OK, so let's say you choose grade four. We have, as I said, we have a kindergarten. 
from kindergarten to year eight or year nine lesson plans. You can choose the region, UK or US. Most of the time I will choose US because they are the same uh, lesson plan, but US normally have more resources available. Courses, we have uh, many different uh, lesson plans, uh, uh, slides, courses, activity here. The standard, I will normally choose the STEAM courses, th this one. We have created coding kit, which come with a 10 lesson plan, create a STEAM kit coming with a 10 lesson plan. Learn to code, normally for secondary school. Uh, Maker design challenge, we have uh, over 100 task card and with answer and without answers and seasonal activities. STEAM 5E courses give you another set of lesson plan with shorter, less than 30 minutes, okay? Uh, summer camp activities and teacher resources as well. Plus, Vernier products, which is our partner using Vernier products and our uh, hardware, and we also have lesson plan available. So what we do, we choose STEAM courses. You can always click more filter and normally pick up English. We also have Spanish available. And uh, if I just choose standard lesson plan, 45 to 60 minutes, okay, that's what I normally choose. That will give you standard each for each grade. You will have about 10 or maximum 12 lesson plan, standard lesson plan. You see the Earth, uh, Earthquake Simulator here, okay? E, there is always four starter lesson plan for STEAM and also four starter lesson plan for the Learn to Code secondary school. I mean, you, you can always open it, have a look at what it look like. What I'm going to show you today is Marzarova is the standard courses, okay? So once you open it, on the right hand side, that's where you see all the resources available. Top four are PDF file. They are the same thing as a, the, the rest of four here from handout, lesson plan, side deck, step by step with each Word document and you can modify. Then that's the formative assessment for and for each lesson. That's our audio recorded near poor lessons. When we design, we have a lesson pack, as I mentioned in my uh, presentation. So slide deck is designed for teachers. Can you see my uh, the slide? Yes. OK, then that's good. So when you look at the slides, OK, and as you can see, these slides are designed related to the mother over. I normally explain, say, our teacher design is uh, actually is not really coding, purely coding, actually more in terms of theory, right? You talk about the friction, OK? You talk about the mother over, you talk about the quite a lot of theory things instead of coding. But obviously, we do have a coding start from half of them is normally theory. And we also have a, a, a structure for teacher to remember. You see warm up, mini lesson, OK? Uh, challenge, keywords, discussions, uh, build, debug, challenge one, challenge two, OK? Exist ticket. So the easy for teacher. But as you know, these are the slides. So we also build lesson plan. These are more like teacher's notes. So you can see here, grade four, age nine to 10, you can do 45 to 60 minutes. When you look at these lesson structures, I normally explain to teachers, right? You can do warm up and mini lessons, except a uh, build sample in one session. And you could do challenge one, challenge two in the next session, and then, challenge to or exit ticket for another session. The reason for that, because each grade, you have about 10 to 12 lesson plan. If you do one lesson in three sessions, one session per week, per hour, that will give you enough to teach uh, for one year, great. Plus there is assessment, challenge card, activities, and you can always use. That means each grade, as for the 10 or 12 lesson, you can use it for a year activities. As you can see, all these notes here to explain each slide, right? You see there is a keyword here, definition. You got the friction, you got the definition here already. What they mean? They mean as a teacher, you really don't need to do further research to try to understand all these lessons. We have all the notes available for teachers to explain each slide 
and activity in during the class. Okay, so that's all the teachers knows. So what we try to do, obviously, to write, reduce teachers burden and get them easy to for the teaching. Then we have student handout, so teacher can give to the students during the class and check students' understanding. You see here the keywords. So for the lower grade, you should probably just match the answer, but for the higher grade. Here are going to be blank, which means that students need to fill out answers. Then we have step by step for students. So during the coding part, students can use this step by step to do the coding themselves. Obviously, a teacher can help the teacher students with the difficult ones, right? If some students have a difficulty in terms of using our program, our hardware, and then teacher can help. But most time, Students can use these step by step to do it themselves. And the final one is the assessment. It does not always come with the four, normally come with the four pages. So if the teacher would like to evaluate the students and do a grade, that these are really good. Okay. So that's you can do these, you see this one as exam or assessment. Near port lessons. Is our audio record lessons. Nearport is a free account. So you, you as a teacher, you can always log in and uh, uh, to Sam Studio. So when you created Nearport account, okay, I have the Nearport account open up already. I already have, have this one. Okay, I already have this one. Uh, okay, you can't just say no thanks or add to my library. I have a Nearport my account here. Already open. So that's all the projects in my Nearport account. So you see mother over here. OK, so when you click mother over, you see there are two things. OK, one you can do live. So which means you can do that during the class. OK, you can do the same time with the students. And you can do student pace, which means you can assign to student to finish within, let's say, two weeks or four weeks. And after the student finish, you can do exam or you can give the challenge card. You know, we have the task card in some studio and test them. So there are two ways, which is really good. So the, today I'm going to do live to show you. So we do live, there is a code. That's a code. If you want to know more about Nearport, I, we can do another session, all right? So what you do, you go to the nearport.com and they will ask you, are you a student or teacher? And you just put this code in the teacher, a student code, all right? And you can do, you can copy the code and send to the student and the internet, they will see exactly as you, uh, as the teacher's a, a screen, okay? So that's what the, is the, you see here, I comply. Okay, uh, you cannot hear, all right? You cannot hear it uh, because I think we are doing a um, uh, team meeting, right? Can you confirm, can you hear it? Um, you no, can't, right? no, Jason, yes. No, yeah, yeah. No. I think I need to share with the Chrome tab, all right? You can see it. But as you can see, but I the think, good. Yeah, I think I think I think that what what we can see here. I'm just making sure because uh, Fajana uh, shared Iqbal uh, asked a question. Now we want to make sure that it's that it's answered. It was around ICT teachers being able to connect these lessons or math teachers to. The, what Jason has shown across here, across the presentation, are various lessons that integrate with your existing curriculum. So there are lessons around mathematics, uh, uh, lessons around earth science, physical science, music, um, uh, engineering, of course, biology, um, even language, uh, uh, language related lessons. So it's really a rep for all the teachers in the school. That's really the unique approach we've done. So it doesn't require to be just a math teacher. Um, I think it's really, it's quite important to, to note and you can kind of filter which subject it is that you want to use. And of course, what we're not showing here are the wireless electronic blocks that you can turn on and bring the lessons to life and work on any device from Chromebook to iPads to Android devices. So, you know, Android tablets uh, to um, uh, uh, PCs, it all, it, it all works together. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for the answer. Okay, I probably spent too much time with the uh, lesson plan, right? So what I'm showing you here, obviously, to give the teachers confidence. In, instead of what we go to strictly go to the coding program, and uh, I want to show you what we sh I show you is as a teacher, you have more resources available. You should be confident to teaching. You sh uh, 
you know, even without knowing uh, how what it looks like. OK, I'll quickly finish this one in a minute. So as I see, uh, as I, you have this coding program. There are quite a lot of video film. You can look at it. OK, and uh, and then uh, you can always, if you are lack of confidence of teaching, you can also with listen to how my teacher teaching and convert to your own language. OK, I'm going to stop this one. What I'm going to show you is so everything here is our content hub or lesson plan. OK, what I'm not going to quickly show you is how to using this uh, coding platform. OK, so what we do, you have let's see here. We have some space, some block, and then we have some script. So when you click some space. This is a visual flow based coding. OK, you have an input, output and the behavior. You can also change the language. All right here. OK, if you want to go to your language. OK, I use English. So we, when we put there, we normally put, let's say, put the button on the left. We put input on the left hand side. OK, uh, we put the output on the right hand side. So when you draw a line, OK, when you draw a line, you connect the input and the put and press button. You see the DC mode is running. OK, I've got the DC mode in the front of me. OK, I'm going to pair it. OK, I just turn it on, I pair it. So what you do, you see the left corner, you got to connect and you pair device. OK, that's a DC motor, you pair it. It's wireless with the Bluetooth. You can also see the battery level to tell you if you're going to need to charge the blocks. That should last you at least about three hours, OK? So you pair it and the, you see the DC motor will change the block, change the color. That's a real one, OK? If I delete this one, when you see the output, that's the virtual one. That's a real one. OK, if you have already have this one in your screen, in your workplace, it might automatically connect it. So I'm going to draw a draw line of this one. OK, this is a button. So when I press the button, the motor, this motor is running. This motor is also running. You should see if you can see my my hand, the motor is still running. OK, or if I, I normally hold the wheels, you can see the motor 10. OK, that's how I do it. Again, but again, this is not really a smart system, right? What we want to do, of course, we build a smart system. Think about you build a, a smart lighting system, okay? So what we do, we're using a light sensor, let's say. We're using a light sensor, we draw a line. You, you're gonna build a street light, let's put it this way, okay? I can change the setting color. You see there's quite a lot of color here you can change, all right? And uh, by the time you move the light sensor, the light is on. But this is not the smart system. What we want to do, we want during the night time, okay, and the light is on, and during the daytime, the light is off, because that's the, what the light sensor can detect a value, right? So at night, midnight, it's dark, the light sensor is zero value, we want the street lights on. During the sunshine, daytime, if the light, if the uh, uh, sunshine, the light sensor, you can read the value is 100, and then the light is off. That's how we build a street a smart light. Again, if you're going to using a light sensor, if I just turn on light, this is a light sensor. Okay, you can see this light sensor. If I just turn this light sensor on, okay, again, I will do connection. I connect the light sensor, a pair. Okay, then. You see the motor is still connection connected. OK, I can connect the motor. OK, the motor is running. OK, all right. I'm going to delete this one first. OK, so I see the license change value. Let's say if I cover by my hands, it's zero. OK, the license is reading zero. The light is on. If I move this sensor to my OK, I got lights here. It can reach probably 100. OK, you see 98. OK, the light is off. So that we have, as I said, we have a all these water blocks and behaviors. And you can if you ungroup the behaviors, OK, if I ungroup the behavior, sorry, yeah. That's all you can see. So many functions you can build many, many complicated. Programming and oh, you got the logic. That's how students learn. OK, this is the visual flow based same space, OK, coding. Then you move to. Uh, Sample block rate. With the sample block rate, you can add device. That's all our blocks, but all 11 different blocks that we have, okay? Sensors. 
and microbit. And that's all vernier products. And spreadsheet, which is good if you want to export, output uh, license of value, systems of value, okay? Proximity center value to Excel spreadsheet. If you have a mean draw, you can still use it, okay? And uh, then let's say, if I just add one device, let's say microbit, okay? Add a microbit, uh, add a device, maybe a button, okay? So that again, when you can, what you can do, let's say, when microbit A, is press okay? By the way, you can make a big, slightly bigger. Okay, I say when micro bit is a press, then you can do you can I will do a buzzer. Okay, let me add a buzzer here. So you can will recite uh, set buzzer color to zero. Okay, and you also set buzzer page, page let's say to ten to ten or and set buzzer value. Uh, vo volume, okay. So what I'm showing you to do here is basically every time you do, when you run the program, you can press the button A, you do something, okay. That is the output without even without hardware, okay. So that's how you do. I have quite a lot of program uh, example here. If you want me, I can show you. Uh, a quickly show you is uh, let's say. Okay, still freshing. Uh, okay, I'm gonna close these ones. Give me a uh, mem uh, more memory. Okay. So, okay, I'm gonna close these ones. Let's say this program. Okay. See here, what I got here is a uh, is a wearable. In the UK, normally year four start teaching wearables. Okay, that's why you, you set up wearable. You ask more questions. So I have this program here said, set question one. It looks like a copyright thing, okay? So when you have someone found a material, they ask you a question, say, was the material found or created? I say, I found the material, okay? Then the second question, they will ask you, is it say copyright free? No, I don't know. So I put it no. The third question they're gonna ask, hey, do you know the owner? If you don't know credit owner, give the owner money. I said, I don't know. See, on the micro bit, on the one thing on the console, it said add owner's name. Okay, so that's one function if you don't use device. Or if I just change here, instead of print add owner's name, I can put it on micro bit. I said display, ask permission to use. Okay, if I just try to run again, I say I found the material. Sorry, I don't know who the owner. I don't know. On microbit, said ask permission. A S K ask permission to use. All right, that's really good in terms of not only teaching about coding, but also teaching on the in the real world practice, real world scenarios. You're teaching lots of things. Okay, so that's some one example. For some script, okay, which means you can convert it. From block based coding, you see block based coding is very easy. Okay, it's block logical. You follow the, the steps, but and uh, quite a lot of program, as you know, application is using JavaScript and uh, Python. So what we can do, what we teaching students here is that you can exchange to change. You see here again, you talk about a variable. Okay, I make it a big slide bigger. Okay, so you can see it. What we have here, we design three variables, a micro bit, two DC motor. It's a, only a simple uh, uh, coding prep. What we do here, we just say, hey, if the program, uh, micro bit A button is pressed, we change the DC motor color and change the DC motor speed, okay? As you can see from here, motor, we change set DC motor speed to 69, okay? If I just run the motor again, run this one, press A, you see? The DC motor is running. It's 69 here. Got the reading 69. Okay, because this one is very simple uh, programming. So what I can change on here, let's say I change 100, and the second DC motor I change to 50. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to change back to JavaScript. If you know the Java language, obviously you can write Java. See, that's all the Java language. 
So as you know, the job let my private define you define variable, right? Define at least a, a, a factor first. So as you know, this job obviously you can write here and it will automatically convert it back to blocks based or you can play hardware. So what I can change here, let's say it says 100. OK, I'm going to, you see, it's already changed. You see, 150, right? Or if I change this one to 50, and the second one to 100, OK? Uh, I can change this one. I can click Python straight away, all right? You see, it said let, let, all right? Define, let's see, Python. Again, this is the Python language. As you can see, there is no let in the front. All right. You see that that you also you can see here a change to 50, 100. Let's go back to block based coding. And then we can also play. All right. You see the black hole also change to 50, 100. Okay, I'm gonna play. Okay, without hardware. Okay, let's play. Okay, 50, you see, the motor one is 50. If I to B, the motor two is 100. Okay, I'm gonna connect the motor two. Okay, so, okay. Okay, I already connected the motor one, by the way. Just give me a second there. Let's say, okay. I haven't turned on. Okay, I'm gonna turn on my motor. So, so in Sam script, Jason, uh, yes. The students and the teachers have the options to teach students um, in Python or JavaScript or the blog base. So that's the beauty of the uh, of the platform itself, isn't it? And it's for after K8 or like it depends. I know we say K8. We are developing another six to eight lesson plan, but actually majority I know from other countries who are using some script for year 10, 11 and 12 as well. So but Preservatively, we are saying K8, okay? And we have all these lessons and as well. So, yeah, I mean, I will say script is more complicated, right? You talk right. about JavaScript. Yeah, I'll just show you. So, I, just, I just connected. Yeah. Sure. So, okay. so, so students will, so a student, let's say, starts from a primary class, right? Primary stage, and then they will learn the, the coding through the blog based. Uh, uh, some uh, some script that we have, right? Uh, some some studios. Um, so what will happen is uh, they will start getting used to of the hardwares as well as the software. And once they will grow in their stages or in their grades, the program is also getting, uh, I mean, also growing with them, right? In terms of the complications, in terms of the concepts. Yeah, so is that correct? Like exactly. the, the yeah, that's yeah, correct. Right. So the content, mm -hmm. the content and the tools grow with the students. Um, right. I'm just answering uh, Vaishali Kanade's questions around how it is different than Lego or other STEM products available. I think the main difference is the um, ease of implementation in the classroom because it is so wireless and because it is um, so because it's wireless, it's super easy to manage a classroom with it. Because it's uh, modular, it can really fit in existing topics in your curriculum. And because we always have fresh and deep lesson and student material, um, the teacher workload is heavily reduced. And that's why we're able to see the outcomes we're seeing with the students, but also with the teachers. Um, that, so that, that's the answer to that. And yeah, it really grows with the students. It grows with the teacher as well. Um, so as I said, you know, Sam Labs is not the, the, the cheapest solution on the market, nor, you know, of course, we want to make it as affordable as possible. We just realize that sometimes you need more as an educator, as a district, and not just sometimes, almost always. And that's why we provide it. And that's why, and being able to do that has allowed us to, sh to, to result in the impact that we've got into. And that is precisely because of the resources and the kind of uh, uh, you know support materials that we are providing. Exactly, Nishant. Uh, I yes, normally yes, suggest yes. the school will go ahead, let's say for three years or five years, as mm -hmm. you probably can't see actually the result, right? You know, just studying uh, using some of the product for one year only. So, because as you can see, we offer to you know from beginners and to uh, advanced 
uh, not only uh, coding platform, all right, but also advanced knowledge. And these knowledge are really valuable, you know, designed by so many educator consultants in terms of the, what's happening in the real world advanced knowledge, okay? So I really and think school new, should yeah. sign up for three, five years. Yeah, and what we're seeing now, I think we can probably wrap up the demo and we can start the Q&A. Uh, um, uh, Jason, I think the last thing we want to tell you maybe to the audience is that we have a career driven course coming out that has um, uh, careers in artificial intelligence or so career tracks and lesson that focus on these career tracks uh, from aerospace engineering to artificial intelligence to filmmaking, game development, agriculture. Um, it, it's really wide and varied. Um, so yeah. Nishant, what, what would be useful for us to uh, to do at this point in the presentation? Sorry, what's that? What would be useful for us to do at this point in the presentation? Um, I, I think the demo is fine and then we can take on the Q&A and uh, I think we okay. are done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's just the last uh, set of question and answers. Uh, that we have for now. Uh, anybody, if they have any questions for Jason or for Joe, uh, you can please write it down in the chat, and um, we'll be, you know, happy to answer you guys. And yeah, one more thing, guys. Um, so after the meeting, after this webinar, in a couple of days, we will be sending you some free trial. Uh, so the login details of the SAM Studio, so that you guys can have a have a look on the studio, like how the lesson plans are made, and you can just do your hands-on on the studio. Uh, and I think that should help you in terms of understanding why SAM Labs is quite important and and what kind of uh, solution that SAM Lab is providing, in, especially in terms of STEM. I'll wrap it up. Uh, first of all, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us, and I'm sure uh, and I hope that you found this session informative and inspiring. So what we'll be doing is we'll be sharing the details of your one month free trial for Sam Studios through email in a couple of days. And uh, yeah, that should help you in, in understanding the Sam Studios a little bit better. Um, and yeah, and I again, one second, thank you all uh, for joining the webinar. You guys have a good one. And I thank you, Jason, and I thank you, Joe, for you know conducting this uh, webinar. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Thank you, thank you, guys. You guys okay. have a good one. Bye, bye, bye.